Today, I'm gonna to show you how simple it is to create four very distinctive portrait looks using just one light. Before we jump into the video, make sure you download my free PDF, Five Portrait Tips for the Studio Photographer. Don't forget to hit that like button, drop me a comment, and I would really appreciate if you were to subscribe to my channel because every single subscription goes far to help me to continue to create entertaining and educational content like this, and I can't do it without you. While you're there, also visit my sponsors, use my promo codes for deals on everything from gear rentals, to software, to even clothing. And if you wanna purchase any of the equipment that I'm gonna talk about today, I'd greatly appreciate if you use the links that are in the description below as well. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can use one light to create four very distinctive portrait looks. All of the images in this video were created using the following gear, a Fujifilm X-T5, 16 to 55 2.8 and 35 millimeter 1.4 lens, Nanlite FS300, Angler 36 inch deep parabolic softbox with a grid, two V flats and one piece of white poster board. In setup 1A, the light is placed to the left of the subject at roughly a 45 degree angle and set slightly above his eye line. I used a black V flat camera right and the soft box is fitted with a grid, which I will discuss in a bit. By using a black V flat opposite my subject, I create negative fill. So the subject's camera right side is cast in fairly deep shadow, which makes the overall look of these particular images extremely dramatic. Think of it this way. By using the black side of the V flat next to your subject, you increase the shadows on that side. The grid on the front of the softbox also increases the shadows on the subject and it keeps the light concentrated so it doesn't spill as much on the background. With the grid, you're gonna be able to create a circular area of light that's very tight, which you can see clearly in a full length portrait and it has a pretty dramatic and unique look to it. You can use this setup to take everything from a full length portrait to three quarter to half to even a headshot without moving any of the lights. All you have to do is zoom in like I did with my 16 to 55 Fuji lens. Now I call the next setup we're gonna discuss 1B because everything has remained in the exact same place as before, except now I flipped around my V flat so the white side is facing my subject. Check out the massive difference that this makes in the images. The light still retains its directional look and shape, but the heavy deep shadows on the camera right side are now much less dense, and we haven't lost any detail to totally black shadow. Everything is much more subtle by just flipping our V-flat around because now the white side of the V-flat, instead of absorbing all of the light, instead bounces it back onto your subject. In most cases, I honestly prefer this to the first setup because I don't like all of the detail lost in pure black, and I prefer to have more subtle transitions from lights to dark in my images. But there is a time and a place for both, and it's really up to you as the photographer to judge what's best depending on the situation and what it creatively calls for. Now, if you're brand new to studio photography and you haven't really done any of this before, I highly recommend starting with a setup similar to this because it's super simple to create some awesome results without a lot of fussing around with lights. And as you can see, we've already created two pretty distinctive looks within our first look by just switching that V flat around. Now in setup number two, I've taken my light and I've placed it above my subject, pointing down directly at him, angled towards him. When the light is above your subject's face, the shadows will now fall under the chin, which helps to accentuate the jawline. This will give you results sort of similar to what you would get if you used a beauty dish, but because this modifier is much larger, the shadows are gonna be less harsh and the overall effect will be more subtle. Just as before though, this setup will work great for a full length portrait or a close up of the face and everything in between and you don't have to move any gear. I really like how the shadows also fall behind the subject onto my backdrop by using this particular setting and I intentionally place my subject directly in front of the backdrop because I love the shadow play and how the shadows on my background interact with the shadows on the person. 
You can easily move the subject away from the background, of course, if you didn't want that and you want to isolate them without using the background as really part of your final image, as I often do. One problem you'll run into with this particular lighting is that the light from above will cast shadows that create raccoon eyes, which are deep shadows in the eye caves. Now there's a few ways to avoid this. First, you can simply have your subject tilt their head up towards the light, as I did for some of my images. But what if you want the subject looking at your camera and you want to avoid the raccoon eyes? Well, the answer is really simple and it's what I'm calling setup 2B. Just like in the first setup, I haven't moved anything at all, but instead I've just added a white V-flat in order to bounce the light back into the subject's face. And look at the massive difference it makes. Now, if you have a V-flat from V-flat world like I do, you can easily fold it into a table shape and then just have your subject lean on it as I did here. If you do that, it can serve as a table and you can get some really great half-length portraits where you have the V-flat intentionally incorporated into the image. But the real awesome reason to use this setup is because it works really well for even a headshot. Take a look at how soft the transitions are now from the light to the shadow and how flattering the lighting is for the subject while still retaining the shadow detail and the sort of 3D look that we like and that accentuates the jawline. Now, you can easily make this setup, take a bunch of half-length portraits where you incorporate the arms and, and the upper body, and then also zoom in and take a head and shoulders headshot and get some awesome results. It's simple, it's flattering, and your subjects will absolutely love it. In setup number three, I simply took the light and I placed it directly behind my subject, and now I've removed the grid. Because I'm now silhouetting him, I positioned him to take a profile because the only light reaching his face is on the very edge. Although I wanted a silhouette, I didn't want him in complete black. So once again, one of my V-flats came to the rescue. I took the white side of the V-flat and positioned it pretty much in front of him, pointing back at his face. By doing this, I was able to bounce enough light onto the front of his face in order to give me the ability to edit to my own taste without losing all of the detail to the shadows. I paid very close attention to make sure I got a small triangle of light on his cheek, sort of like the shape you'd get from Rembrandt lighting, because I feel like this gives a lot more interest to the photos and the overall image we're creating. Now, finding the right exposure here is going to be very challenging because if you properly expose the front of the face, the rest of it is gonna be blown out. But if you expose to the background, obviously everything will be in complete shadow. So in this case, I recommend experimenting to find a look that speaks to you. I like seeing a little bit of the subject detail, but I didn't like it as much when he was really blown out. So I went with that sort of a look in my images and especially when I edit it. Okay, now in setup number four, I went for a much harder and grittier light. I did this by removing the softbox completely from the light and instead I just used the reflector. I positioned the light very, very close to my subject, high above his head and angled down sharply towards him so that the shadows were really quite deep. Just as before with the V-flats, the white poster board served to bounce the light back into his face. And although the light is still very hard, very dramatic, that little bit of bounce into the shadow areas helps to retain the dynamic range of the image and it makes it much easier to edit without crushing the shadows. You can also see that I have him right against the background here as I did before. This is something, as I said, that I love to do and it's really a stylistic choice, but I love how the shadows bounce and interplay with the subject when they're right against the backdrop. Again, if you don't like that look, simply move them away from the backdrop so the light isn't hitting it directly. Okay, so some final thoughts on this. One mistake I made in my journey as a studio photographer early on is that I would buy a modifier, use it once, and then never use it again. 
I mean, it's so easy to accumulate gear because we are always experimenting and trying to find that perfect light. So my suggestion to you, if you're brand new to this, would be to do something like what I've demonstrated here. Instead of buying a ton of lights and modifiers, just go ahead and get yourself one good light, one good modifier, and then experiment to that until you can see how the light is falling in, on, and around your subject. I would highly recommend getting a continuous light like the NAN light I used in this video because it's so much easier to set it and adjust it because you see the results in real time, unlike with a flash. Now there are limits to continuous lights, but in a controlled studio setting, I've reached the point now where I use continuous lights almost 100% of the time in lieu of flash. Seeing light is also a skill that you develop, just like hearing music. I remember when I first started playing electric bass as a kid, I would listen to music, but I couldn't hear the bass line. And it took me a while before I recognized and understood what the bass sounded like. And then it sort of clicked and became prominent in the music that I would hear. And now as a bass player, I hear the bass up front right away, no matter what recording I'm listening to, because I've trained my ear to hear it. Seeing how light works is the same thing. When I first started, I couldn't see lots of the subtleties in light and shadow that I see now when I create my images. And it took a lot of practice in my studio as well as studying the works of other photographers that I admire in order to begin to recognize and internalize what the light looks like. Well, that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. And once again, if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment while you're at it. Check out my affiliate links to Amazon or b &H Photo if you want to check out any of the gear in this tutorial that I've discussed today. Here's wishing you an amazing day. Go out, take some great pictures, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.